With the third pick in the 2014 NBA Draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Joel Embiid from Yaoundé, Cameroon, and the University of Kansas. With the 12th pick in the 2014 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select Dario Saric from Šibenik, Croatia. Big Croatian forward. With the first pick in the 2016 NBA Draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Ben Simmons from Melbourne, Australia and Louisiana State University. With the 24th pick in the 2016 NBA Draft, the Philadelphia, the Philadelphia 76ers select Timote Luawu Kevaro from Khan, France. He last played for Megalex in Serbia. Oh, this you crazy mother. So if you've been paying attention to NBA news as of recently, you would know that the 76ers and the Boston Celtics are in serious trade discussion between the one and third picks. Now, this is a no-brainer for Philadelphia as they are targeting Markel Fultz, who they have really fallen in love with, with his play style and everything. But as of recently, on the Twitter account of David Aldridge, there's been a post where he said, Trades between Philly and Boston will be finalized on Monday, per source. Sides have agreed. Sixers will get the first pick and take Fultz. So what does this mean for the NBA? Well, it means, in my opinion, that the Sixers have the most potential out of any young team to become championship contenders. But looking ahead to next year, we will see the Sixers starting five and just how deadly they are. At point guard, Markel Fultz. Now Markel is the man that we've all been waiting to see in this draft. He did not get to play in the March Madness tournament because of subpar talent on his team. But now that we've obtained him, in theory, the process is finally complete. His stats from the University of Washington are 23.2 points per game, 5.9 assists per game, 5.7 rebounds per game, 1.6 steals per game, 1.2 blocks per game, he shoots 47% from the field and 41% from three. This is a ridiculously high three-point percentage, and this will help in today's NBA where the three ball has been revolutionized and is an important part of every team. Now, I believe that his work ethic will propel him to the top, as you could see from his uh, summer body, as you could say his, uh, his dedication to his three-point shot, his dedication to the game in general. Uh, he's a great primary ball handler to stick next to Simmons, and he can create his own shot and hit threes, so Simmons won't have to worry about having all the primary ball handling issues. And now he's, good si he's a really good size for a point guard at 6'4", 195 pounds. He has all the tools he needs to grow into an NBA superstar, and only time will tell if he becomes Philly's number one option. At shooting guard, Timote. Lawua Cabarro. I know, I know. Most of you who aren't Sixers fans haven't heard of the Frenchman Lawua Cabarro. But just hear me out. His stats are 6.4 points per game, 1.1 assists per game, 2.2 rebounds per game. He shoots 40% from the field and 31% from three. Not very impressive, right? Well, this is very explainable. See, Timote found very limited minutes throughout the season and found decent time with the Delaware 87ers, the Sixers' D-League team. But when asked to do more in the offense, he delivered. In his last 18 games, he averaged 
10.2 points per game, 3.7 rebounds per game, and 2.1 assists per game. Even though Dario Saric was out of the game and he was asked to do a lot more with the ball, he excelled a lot and he kept a lot of his efficiency numbers as well. So if he continues on this upward trend, I could see him moving into the starting shooting guard position. Also, in the month of April, he averaged 18.3 points per game and won the honors of almost making the Eastern Conference Rookie of the Month. He has a lot of potential and he can play off ball. He doesn't need the ball in his hands to succeed. He's also 6'6 and 205 pounds. At small forward, Ben Simmons. Now we take a look at the player who arguably has the most potential of all the Sixers on the roster. The man who has received comparisons to LeBron James, Ben Simmons. His stats in college were 19.2 points per game, 11.2 rebounds per game, 4.8 assists per game, he shot 56% from the field and 33% from three. Don't really pay attention to this three point mark because he actually took three threes and made one. He is ridiculously terrible at taking threes and that's why we really need Markel. But he has incredible size for his position at 6'10", 240 pounds. He has unbelievable passing, but his jumper needs some work. He's very efficient at finishing inside, as you can see from that 56% field goal percentage. Hopefully, he can come into the NBA and just be a huge difference maker, and maybe his injuries won't hold him back too much. I'm a little bit scared about that Jones fracture, and just maybe create shots for his teammates. Um, but the three-point shot, and just the shooting in general, just it needs to improve, but maybe with his passing ability we can just get so many floor spacing involved like Markel can move off ball and Ben Simmons will move into the lane and they'll be forced to either give Ben Simmons an easy layup at the bucket because he'll be able to dominate most small forwards because he's way bigger than them and he, Ben Simmons can just kick it out to Markel Fultz who can drain easy threes or kick it out to Dario Saric or Joel Embiid I mean the possibilities are endless with this guy and if he shoots a three Oh my gosh, it'll it'll just be incredible how good Ben Simmons can become. At power forward, Dario Saric. Dario Saric is the 6'10", 223 pound Croatian sensation. His stats this year were 12.8 points per game, 6.8 rebounds per game, and 2.2 assists per game while shooting 41% from the field and 31% from three. Now, Dario has really flourished this season, and I believe he will be Rookie of the Year contender, or he will get the Rookie of the Year, because Joel Embiid didn't play enough games to win the, the award, even though I think he was way better than Dario. But in the beginning, Dario kind of struggled a little bit, but as the season progressed, he has only progressed with it. He has shown an ability to put the ball on the floor and just make his opposing defenders just flat out dance trying to get the ball from him. I didn't know if you guys have seen that crossover where we went behind the back on Jacob Podol and dropped him and then drained the mid-range jump shot. That was just absolutely disgusting and it showed that he can create his own shot and he can also create for his teammates and as the season progressed his three-point shot progressed which is really great to see that we're finding all these floor spacers especially from the power forward position but he could still improve a lot on his defense. And at center, Joel Embiid. The man, the myth, the legend, and also the process, Joel Embiid averaged 20.2 points per game, 7.8 rebounds per game, 1.2 assists per game, and 2.5 blocks per game, shooting 47% from the field and 37% from three-point hand. This is a really incredible three-point percentage from a center from the man who has been compared to Hakeem. Not only are these stats impressive for a rookie, he did them on 25 minutes per game, minutes restriction, and he still got these stats. Sure, he only played about half the season, but it's just ridiculous to see this kind of crazy stats. He's already huge for a rookie, and he's shown his dominance in the paint with his size. He has just limitless amounts of potential and he's so fun to watch play. He's the centerpiece of this Philadelphia offense and defense really because of his shot blocking ability and just incredible size and weight. 
and I can't wait to see what he'll do next season if he's able to come back from his injury fully recovered. So, how will this starting five mesh together? Well, I could see Ben Simmons being the primary ball handler and uh, driving into the lane and distributing it out for like easy threes or a Ben Simmons, uh, Joel Embiid pick and roll. Um, when Ben Simmons doesn't have the ball on his hands, it'll probably go to Markel, who will probably ISO a defender, uh, use his size just to get into the lane or get a jump shot up. He's really good at taking difficult shots off the dribble. Um, I could see uh, Dario Sarge and Joel Embiid sometimes coming out of the paint just to kind of like space it out and allow for Ben Simmons to kind of work in there and not have to worry about the lane being too clogged. But definitely something to look out for would be the Joel Embiid Ben Simmons pick and roll or the Markel Fultz Joel Embiid pick and roll. Or you could, I could see any kind of like pick and roll, pick and pop situation with everybody. And uh, Timote, Timote would probably just like... Uh, space the floor if he can improve his three-point shot. He's going to be more of a 3 and D player who uh, doesn't really need to have the ball in his hand. He'll be like one of those low usage players who you don't really need. Um, yeah, but his defense, I think, will really improve throughout the years, and uh, we could see a lot of defense from that shooting guard position and just a three when we need it. Uh, but I think the main thing to look out for is the Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid pick and roll. And so that is going to be the video. Thank you so much if you stayed all the way through. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you liked what you see. I'll be posting basketball videos probably about once or twice a week. I don't have an upload schedule yet, but I'm going to need subscribers before I really stay committed to this. So uh, comment what you want to see next if you want to see anything more. Uh, thank you so much for watching and... Uh, Trust the process, guys.